Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about this unusually beautiful gas giant in a system that's something like 3700 light years away from us that has not one but two stars and so this is actually the biggest uh, circumbinary planet out there. This is the biggest planet that has not one but two stars, very similar of course to Tatooine in Star Wars. In today's video we're going to discuss this planet and also recreate this in Universe Sandbox. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click that subscribe button right now because there's so many more videos coming in the future. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And this particular video has actually been requested by a person by the name of Nader Alionis. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Um, this is the person who messaged me on Facebook mentioning that basically I totally forgot to cover this really important news or somewhat important news. So the discovery of this beautiful planet that has actually been in space science for a very long time now. And we're going to basically explore it and also talk a little bit about it. And uh, of course recreate this in Universe Sandbox just to see what it actually looks like in real life or possibly looks like in real life life. Now in this game, for some unknown reason, it is absolutely gorgeous. It has beautiful rings that you see right there. We're going to actually try to get into them, or at least f fly through them. And it also has this really beautiful, uh, I guess you could call it sort of mock-like creamy patterns that will make spin and rotate in a few seconds as I accelerate time here. So you have a lot of really awesome effects here. And this is what this beautiful planet looks like. Now this exoplanet obviously has a name and the name here is Kepler-1647b. It's a planet that orbits two stars that you're going to see in a second as soon as I turn around. Now they are relatively large stars. As a matter of fact, both of them are um, somewhat larger than our star and our sun, actually except for this one, this one's slightly smaller, uh, and they orbit in a very peculiar way, basically they orbit around one another, making the skies look kind of like this. So this is what uh, you would see if you were to actually live on this gas giant. Now the interesting thing about this gas giant of course is that um, not only is it orbiting two stars and not only is it actually the biggest circumbinary planet that we've discovered to date, meaning that it's basically the biggest such planet that has these two stars that it orbits. Um, on top of all of this, this particular planet is also located in the habitable zone of this system, which is really, really exciting. Now, we obviously can't really live on gas giants, but if this gas giant has moons, which is quite likely because every gas giant in our system has quite a lot of moons, then at least one of these moons may actually be habitable. We might be actually able to uh, survive on one of the moons of this particular gas giant. And this to me sort of looks like, a, like an egg. I don't know why. It totally looks like an egg. It's an egg gas giant. Anyway, so let's actually talk a little bit more about this system. And let me actually turn around so you can see the stars. But yeah, so basically this is the biggest such uh, planet out there. It has um, a very, very long period of over three years that, you know, it takes it to orbit these two beautiful stars that we're going to see in the distance right there. And from the uh, perspective of the scientists, what is really unusual about this particular planet is that it's actually kind of hard to discover these circumbinary planets around uh, double stars because um, these two stars orbit around one another and they always kind of cover each other. They always cover each other's brightness slightly. And so discovering an object that will cover even more uh, luminosity or basically will decrease luminosity even more is somewhat challenging. But this is exactly how this particular planet was found. And um, one of the reasons why it was found is because it is actually very large and also very massive. As a matter of fact, it's actually um, more massive and more uh, big, more wide than our own Jupiter. So here you can see that it's about 1.5 times the mass of Jupiter and also its diameter is also um, about twice as big as Jupiter as well. Anyway, so let's actually go into Universe Sandbox and see if we can recreate this beautiful system using some of the randomly generated gas giants there as well. And so let's start creating these two stars first and then we're going to add the planet just to see what it all looks like. We're going to place a random main sequence star and then change its mass until it's about 1.22 masses of sun. 
because this is actually what um, the main star here um, is like and this is going to be Kepler 1647. It has a companion star that orbits around it, so we're going to also add that, but this particular companion is only about 0.97 or about 97% uh, the mass of the sun. So let's see if we can maybe find something that's already similar to that or just create um, some... Oh, this is actually... I think this is pretty close. Or we might just have to add another random sequence star um, and we're going to add it right around here and of course change its mass to about 0.97. Uh, masses of the sun and let's see how they actually start orbiting around one another so yeah okay that's not too bad this is this is looking pretty good let's just actually rename this into kepler uh 6047 capital b and so here is our uh, binary system and we're now going to add a circumbinary planet now the thing about circumbinary planets is that if they're too close to these two stars, they're not going to stay in a stable orbit. And if they're too far from these two stars, they're also not going to stay in a stable orbit and they're going to fly away. So circumbinary or, um, planets, or in other words, um, planets in binary systems are very, very difficult to, uh, to essentially have, to keep them in, in a stable orbit. Which is why this particular planet that we've discovered uh, seems to be a bit of a mystery to us, because it's actually kind of far away from them. And it's kind of in a very stable orbit, or so it seems at least. Uh, so here the uh, orbit would be at a distance of about 2.7 astronomical units from the main star. So it's around here. And the mass of this particular planet, Kepler 1647b, is approximately 1.51 masses of Jupiter. Uh, and so this is actually what we've created so far. Now it doesn't really look as beautiful as it did in Space Engine. Uh, but it is yellowish, it is orangey, and it has a little bit of blue here, so it does look kind of pretty. Alright, so that's our gas giant, it's actually getting bigger because I just added the mass to it. But it also had rings, and we don't really know if it does have rings or not. But what we could do is maybe, um, we could uh, maybe th improvise a little bit, speculate a little bit, and add a few more, um, objects to it, like moons for example. But, okay, something's not right here. So as you can see, this is not a stable system. This is definitely not what I wanted. This particular system, because these are two circumbinary stars, or sorry, binary stars, and this is a circumbinary planet, have unfortunately not kept this planet in a very stable orbit. So I may have to try this again. Let's actually try this one more time, create a completely new gas giant around these two binary stars, and hopefully this time it will be a little bit more stable. And so here comes Kepler-1647b again, and I think once again, we are not really having a stable orbit here. Uh, yeah, this time it's actually fallen behind and these two stars are flying away from us. So this is obviously a problem. So if I were to place this at a distance of about, um, I don't know, let's just say one astronomical unit, it should technically stay in orbit just fine. But even this would be very difficult. So there's actually a very, very sort of a specific uh, place around these two binary stars where a planet can actually stay in orbit. And unfortunately, I'm having trouble finding where exactly this would be. So I'm going to actually try this from scratch again because so far all of my launches were unsuccessful. So let's try this again. So we're going to start with relatively stable Kepler 1647 and 1647b. They seem to have an almost perfectly circular orbit around one another. And now, let's try to add a randomly generated gas giant at a distance of about 2.7 astronomical units. And so here is our newly generated Kepler 1647b, and it is at a distance of about 2.7 astronomical units. Let's see how this goes. This is attempt number two, and hopefully they will stay, or it will stay in a stable orbit around these two stars. I'm about to find out if it actually worked. Uh, chances I may have not worked, because it seems to be flying away from us, or from these two stars. So once again, this is not successful. Let's actually just place a few more, just to see if it works at all. And all of them seem to be flying away. Alright, well that's not, that's really not good. That's really, really not good. 
Now, I've actually played around for this for quite some time now, uh, trying to find uh, the best way for me to actually create this sort of combinary system. And it's actually really challenging. And if you do have Universe Sandbox uh, too, you can try this yourself. But one of the easiest ways, and I guess probably one of the only ways, is to manually play around with the total velocity value right here. Now, as you can see, I can kind of, I could kind of create a, um, a system for a few minutes there, or for a few seconds, but it sort of became unstable again. And this sort of gives you an idea that these circumbinary planets or these circumbinary systems are actually a mystery. It's very difficult to create them and I know that Universe Sandbox 2 has a really really accurate uh, simulation of and, and body um, simulation essentially where you have uh, different objects with different gravity acting on one another but even this particular simulation is struggling with the creation of this circumbinary system. So let's, let's try this again. So I'm going to place this at a distance of 2.7 astronomical units. Now, I actually decided to keep the same names for now because I just want to create something that's stable. And we're going to go into motion and just watch if we need to decrease this. So let's decrease this to about um, 40 kilometers per second. Maybe a little bit more. And let's hope that this will now stay in a somewhat stable orbit. I've decreased the total velocity to about 18 kilometers per second, but I can kind of see that it's slowly crawling toward the binary system. So once again, this is not stable as well. Now that means that I've totally failed uh, trying to recreate this circumbinary system, which also means that uh, this huge gas giant known as Kepler-1647b, which I should totally rename this as, is orbiting in a very unusual, very mysterious, and possibly very peculiar orbit, um, about which I definitely know nothing about. Uh, so this is the best I could create, I and mean, I'm pretty sure this is not stable either, because at some point it will either fly too close to those two stars and then disappear, or fly too far and also disappear. And I can kind of see if this happens by accelerating time here. And let's see if what happens after a few years. Now, this does kind of look like a stable orbit right now, but I know that it may actually dissipate at some point, especially because this uh, object is actually going to be acting on those two stars as well. It is massive enough to have some effect. And look at that, see? <laughs> I have destroyed the system. Now, that's not to say that uh, this is a problem with uh, the simulation. It might be just because we don't really understand how exactly these circumbinary systems work. We, we found some of them, we haven't found too many. We know they exist, but we don't really know exactly how things work there. We know that the minimal distance for this planet to be in a stable orbit around these two stars is uh, equal to about two to four distances between the two stars. So in other words, if I were to create a new system here, and place two stars at a distance of, um, let's just say, one astronomical unit. So if they're only one astronomical unit away from each other, the minimal distance for a circumbinary um, planet to exist in a stable orbit would be at least two, but very likely uh, three to four astronomical units. So somewhere around right here, I'm going to actually just place it in orbit. So this would be the minimal distance. But uh, creating this is a challenge. It's actually very, very challenging to try to create a stable uh, orbit. As you can see, they just kind of fly away. Anyway, so I failed miserably. And if you succeed, please let me know what parameters you use and how you did it. So we can actually do this again in one of the future videos. Anyway, so thank you so much again, Nader, for um, reminding me to talk about this particular system because it is pretty interesting. And circumbinary planets are pretty awesome. I mean, Tatooine from Star Wars was pretty awesome. And this is exactly what this would be as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't and check out some of the other videos where I do talk about circumbinary planets and also other videos uh, related to space sciences, math or sciences in general. I'll see you guys in the next video. Game you later and as always, bye bye.